what's going on? I just got back from groceries. Kids are home from school. My wife will be home soon. And uh, I need to get dinner on the table in about 45 minutes. So no game planning today. Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, we gotta get going. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Tim, the Dizzy Daddy here. And as you heard, I'm getting ready to make dinner. Now, obviously, that entrance was staged, but from here on out, none of it is. This is kind of an experiment, sort of in the vein of the duck salad that I made at five in the morning the other day. Basically, I'm gonna walk you through my daily routine of getting dinner on the table. And even though I'm gonna be cutting camera angles here and there, and cutting away to switch lighting and all that stuff, I do not intend to stop the timer once. So we're gonna try this out. I may not make it, but we're gonna do our best here and uh, we'll see what we can do. I've already gotten some of the uh, ingredients out. Uh, none of it's prepped, but I did sort of get it all out so that it's accessible to me. I hope you'll allow me that. So without further ado, let's start the kitty. Okay, so here's my timer and I am going to set it to, hope that focus stays focused for you, to just above 45 minutes, okay? So that's at about 46 minutes right now, and uh, we're gonna get going. So first of all, we always start with stuff that's gonna take the longest, right? Or stuff that we want to have prepped and ready to go for us. So in my case, miso soup. I'm gonna take some water here. This is about enough for my family. Um, and we're gonna put the wakame in. Wakame is a dried seaweed, and this is gonna add a little bit of flavor, plus my younger daughter really likes it. Now this doesn't look like a whole lot what I put in there, it expands, so just so you know, don't put too much in there. Also going in there is gonna be tofu later, and also miso, but that's going in later, okay? And we are gonna set this very low. This is at about a three, because we don't ever want this to boil, especially once the miso is in. We, you never boil or bubble miso because it kills the flavor. So that's set, let's move on. Okay, so I'm not sure if you've ever had Filipino food before. If you have, then you'll know about something called their garlic rice. And I've never had cracked cocaine before, but I'm sure it's very similar. Because once you have that stuff, man, you just want it. So, we're gonna take the mushrooms, and don't worry about them being kind of big like this. As soon as you saute them, they shrink right down. Okay. I'm gonna start turning on my skillet here and we'll get ready to make our garlic rice. Okay, I've got one of my favorite well-worn pans here. You are gonna be sort of frying stuff in here, so yeah, you don't wanna use something super nice or whatever, right? Use one of your old standbys. Put about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in there. Uh, not extra virgin, just normal olive oil. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's not. So, I'm gonna put a bit in there and right away, garlic. Now this is still heating up, but I kind of wanted it in there before it gets too sizzly. Okay, we are going to brown this stuff, but we don't want it to get too crazy. Because we don't want it to burn, but we do want it to get toasty and a little bit crisp, right? So what we're gonna do is, if you can see, I'm kind of keeping them all in one end of the pool here, right? So what that does is it sort of makes the oil a bit deeper and it gives a bit of a fry. So we're gonna get that going, and in the meantime, I will show you, I've got some pre-cooked rice. Now, pre-cooked rice is always a good thing to have. Always make a little bit more than you need and have it around, or you can get that Uncle Ben stuff. Uncle Ben's has that stuff that you just nuke in the microwave for like 90 seconds, and it's good to go. Well, they have white rice too, so if you have a couple packets of that around, or uh, if you're making it for only one or two people, this is just a side dish, so even one of those is great. Okay. Look at that, it's getting up here. Can you see that? Can you see that? Okay, if I pull it up here, maybe you can see, but it's starting to get some color on it. Now is about the right time to get our mushrooms in. And these are gonna soak up a lot of the oil and sort of distribute a little bit of their liquid. So it's gonna stop the garlic from burning completely, but it is going to continue, the garlic is gonna continue to get crisp and nice and brown like that, and that is what we want. Okay, 
I have about two and a half cups of rice here. And now, one of my favorite condiments, a bit of fish sauce, just for a bit of saltiness in there. And I don't know if this actually happens in the original kind of garlic rice in Filipino cuisine, but this is sort of my take on it. And very small amount, but I'm gonna put a little bit of sesame oil in there just to scent it. Okay, once you mixed it up nice and good, incorporated that cooked rice, now you can see the little flecks of toasted garlic in there, that is delicious. Okay, now we taste it. Remember this, always taste your food. Okay, you gotta taste it along the way. And yes, if I'm cooking for somebody else, other than my family, I will use a tasting spoon, right? A new one every time. But, this is my family. So far our germs are pretty good with each other, so I'm going to just take a little bite here. Oh! That's really good. But it does need a little bit of salt, so I'll give that just a bit. But that sort of uh, depth of flavor from the fish sauce and the scent from the uh, both the garlic and the sesame oil, it is heavenly. This is a little rich, so just for a tiny bit of brightness, I'm just gonna hit it with just a tiny bit of lemon juice. And a tiny bit of parsley for color. And guess what? We're done. I got that plated up, so that's going into the warming oven. Okay, on with the show, on with the salmon. So, I'm gonna give my knife a little clean here and I'm gonna open this guy up. Okay, this is a sockeye salmon filet. My family's gonna eat about, probably about half of this. We're not the biggest eaters. If you are, definitely make more. Now let's portion this. Let's go one, two, three, and four. Okay, let's give this a little season. So I'm gonna give a little bit of salt. Remember a woman in my old neighborhood when I was young, she used to tell my mother that she hated salmon because it was kind of fishy and didn't taste like anything. And my mom asked her if uh, she salted it and seasoned it. And she said, well, no, salt is bad for you. And uh, well, it's kind of one of those moments where the conversation just kind of stops there because what are you going to say after that, right? Your body needs salt. Now, should you sit around eating tons of chips and washing it down with some salt water and, you know, licking Himalayan salt lamps and stuff like that? No! But is a little bit of salt okay for you? Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Don't live in a flavorless world, please. Okay? That's sad. I have given this a clean. Same pan. Gonna start getting it hot, but I'm gonna put it on low because I'm still got a couple things to do with these guys. Okay, but I am starting my pan. All the things that you can start early, you start them a little bit early. And also, it's a good practice to always have a pot of boiled water or a kettle full of boiled water at the ready at all times, just in case. Usually I would hit, I was about to hit this with garlic powder, but I just realized we have garlic rice. We don't need any more garlic, so let's just dredge this quickly, just so that it'll give it a bit of a uh, crust there. Not too much, and only get rid of this excess. Okay, man, we're back over here. I'm gonna get that heat going to medium now. Okay, I'm gonna go in with some butter and a bit of olive oil. Okay, not extra virgin, just normal olive oil. I'm sure some of you might know this, but for those of you who um, are not sure why I'm mixing the two, it's because butter burns fairly quickly and easily, and olive oil has a higher smoke point. That is the heat at which it starts to burn. So what it does is it kind of mellows that butter out 
and allows it to have a little bit of a longer cooking life. Okay, so this isn't not gonna sizzle when I put it in because it's not quite super hot yet, but I'm I'm going already. Okay, and four will just fit fairly comfortably in here. Do not crowd the pan. Right? This is about all that will fit in here, so let's do this. And you can hear it start to go. Skin side down. We want to crisp that because uh, on these uh, wild sockeye salmon, when they're prepped like that, when you get it from a uh, place like Costco or whatnot, they generally scale it for you. But also, even when they don't, uh, salmon of that size, if you crisp the skin, you can actually eat the skin. And we enjoy that. Some people don't like that. If you don't like that, then by all means, just cook it up and peel it off later. Or you can even try to like, um, skin it. I'll show you in another video. I didn't have time today, but I can show you how to take the skin off. Um, but we're gonna go skin side down. This is gonna sit for about like maybe, oh, about five minutes. You like to watch, you'll see the color. If you can just see here, where am I pointing at? Don't burn yourself. You'll watch the colors rise up. The side of the fish, they'll start to change. In this case, it's gonna turn sort of a pink opaque, okay? Once it's about three quarters of the way up, then you can flip it over, right? That's gonna be enough time to crisp the skin on the bottom. Okay, I'm just gonna let this go for a bit and I'm gonna clean up and get stuff going. But this is on medium and it is, uh, if it starts to get too hot, I'll turn it just a bit lower, but we're gonna uh, let this go for about five minutes. Okay, our fish is going and I've turned the heat down even lower because it is a heavy bottomed uh, pan. Now remember this. Look at that, it is nice and I'm not sure if you can see that, but the wakame is nice and uh, reconstituted now, nice and soft, and it is very steamy in there. So I'm actually just gonna turn the heat off for just a sec. I'm going to add some miso, and I'm gonna go with about, for this amount, probably a tablespoon and a half. Uh, maybe this is closer to two tablespoons, but you know what? We like we like it a little bolder in flavor. So I'm gonna put it. This is the best way to melt it down really quickly. Put it in a little strainer like this and just kind of work it. Okay, it's in there. Let's pop our uh, tofu in there too. It is sometimes hard to get the tofu out of here in one go. So what I like to do is I'll flip it over like this. Can you see that? I went in here, cut one little notch, and the air rushed in and just popped off. And then from there, just gonna cut it into cubes. If you're not comfortable with this, then do it please on a cutting board. Always stay safe. And normally I put it on a plate and slide it in there, but I'm in a hurry. So, ah! Okay, there we go. And now, that tofu's cooled it up a bit, but we're gonna Keep the heat really low. We're gonna check it from uh, in a little bit to make sure it's not bubbling or anything like that. We want it steamy, but we don't want it to bubble. Okay, miso, miso's taste dies when it starts to boil. Okay, back to the fish. Gosh darn it, the camera wasn't on. Okay, I just flipped these things and you guys didn't see it because I thought we were rolling. Anyways, these are over like this. And I came over here and was like, talking to a dead camera, basically. But basically, these are crisped up on the bottom. The color is crept about halfway to three quarters of the way up, and then we turn them again. And you can see how the skin has crisped up. Whew, this is actually pretty hectic, cooking with the uh, time limit with the camera and changing the angles and stuff. But you know what? All for you guys. This is gonna be done pretty soon, so I'm gonna turn this on low. There's still a lot of residual heat in here. I'm gonna let this go for about three minutes, okay? Let me check the time here. Ho, ho, ho! We got just over five minutes to go. You gonna get a few veggies as well. And just give this a quick peel. And that salmon, you can eat it as is or with a little bit of soy or as my kids like to have it with ponzu. We love ponzu in this uh, in this family. Okay, so that's just a little bit of veg on the side. Okay, back to this guy over here. Let's check it. 
and you can often feel it too. Now, if you don't have fireproof hands like I do, don't do this. And a good way to test, you can take your, your knife and just start to push it. If I push hard enough, you can see that it's flaking. Once it comes apart like that easily, it's done. So these are done. These are done. You're done. And of course, a little bit of garnish. How's my kitty doing? I got... Oh, I got one minute. Here we go. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> That's the bell. All right. So there is my fish. There is my rice. Miso soup. And while I didn't get this on the table, it is pretty much ready to be put on the table. So I hope you'll forgive me that. That was a little hectic. <laughs> Moving the lights and the camera and all that jazz. But hey, I did not touch the kitty once. So that's it. We got dinner not quite on the table, but we got it done. It's ready to go. My wife should be walking through the door any minute now. And I made it. So once again, this was real life, real time. Something you can do in about 45 minutes to an hour after work. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit the like button, all that, the bell, all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.